Well, guys, it's that time of year where we say goodbye to the films of 2019 and hello to what's to come in 2020. We'll be talking through the latest looks we're getting at this year's biggest films and making our Oscar predictions in a Funhouse Filmhouse Award Showdown Oscar Spectacular f Awards for the Arts and Sciences. That's not it. I've got a very special surprise, so make sure to stick around um, because you won't want to miss it. <laughs> I'm joined here by my guests, Adam Kovic, Elise like Willems. I third oh, saw yeah. the most. I'm your host <laughs> this week, James Willems. And, uh, and I want to quickly shout out our sponsor, Manscaped. Get 20% off at, uh, and free shipping with the code FILMHOUSE20 at manscaped.com. So... Hello. What do you mean by say, saying hello to what's to come in 2020? Mm -hmm. We just recently, the Super Bowl just happened. Yeah. Um, Go Pats. Go Niners. <laughs> <laughs> nice yeah. job, guys. Uh, no, just... <laughs> uh, the Super Bowl just happened, and with the Super Bowl comes not really so much football, but lots of talk about halftime shows and, and new responsibility. trailers mm -hmm. for movies. Oh, that are coming out in the not so distant future because this is like the last huge marketing push you can. Five million dollars per 30 seconds. Can you <laughs> believe it? I mean, I can. Oh. I can, mm. but mother of God, there has to be some a better way to reach people. Yeah. Anyway, we're doing a podcast on it, so I guess yeah. that's worth their five million. Um, I wonder how they count this in their P&Ls. I am curious. They don't have that. No, they don't God have no. That. Um, if it makes less money. than a billion dollars, it didn't. It failed. Um, <laughs> so I uh, went through and I gathered all the trailers for the movies that I could find that Ooh. aired during the Super Bowl. Super Bowl, and again, these are more like some of them are longer, mm -hmm. um, but most of them are like thirty second spots. I did leave out Sonic because it wasn't even really a trailer for. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it wasn't even really a trailer for the movie. It was a bunch of athletes tricking you into thinking that they were talking about like Kobe Bryant and mm -hmm. then it was like actually it's Sonic. <laughs> oh my um, god. That's weird. Did they didn't kneel? do that explicitly but it was like it made it sound like they were talking about Did like anyone... this athlete who's so amazing and so great mm -hmm. and just so memorable and inspiring bad timing. and it turns out it's yes. Sonic. Sonic normally has bad timing. More so here. No, when you hit that A button he jumps. Mm -hmm. At least what were you saying? No, it's the moment's passed. Okay, oh, I want to hear it. No, no, no. It's totally it's totally passed. Stay tuned to the end to hear Elise's joke. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, the first thing that came up was Mulan. Um, that is, sorry, we Which have Which friend of the channel, Jimmy Wong's in Mulan. Mm -hmm. Very is he a exciting. friend of the channel? He's a friend of mine. Yeah, I'm by proxy, because he's friends with Freddie. I'm sorry, but friends I, with I would say. Freddie's cousin? Yeah. Jimmy Brother. has an excitement for me that Freddie lacks. Are they related? <laughs> They're brothers. They're brothers, okay, yeah. Never want so, to assume. Did you, guys, did you guys get a chance to check out any of these trailers? No, I am boycotting China because they have not returned any of my Amazon packages. They're trying to make him sick. <laughs> <laughs> Stop giving me, I, I beat SARS, I beat swine flu, and now you want to give me a corona? I was gonna How say, dare you? The first thing I noticed about this trailer is no mention of coronavirus. Interesting. Um, which I thought was bold, a mm -hmm. bold take. The next thing I noticed about the trailer was the super widescreen aspect ratio in which it was being displayed. You want to see it all. Um, not a lot of new information from this. Uh, no issue. No Mushu, no sign of Mushu, no sign of that uh, puzzle they have to solve, cl climbing the pole with the weights, and it oh, turns out right. you do the thing, you tie them off on the other side, goes, which like would guys? still be very hard. Um, so it, it does sell itself very much as like an historical action fantasy epic. It'll probably be the best of the live action. We've talked about this before, but like I think we know so little about. Are we? We have so little care for the original Mulan, unless oh, you're Joel. Oh, I love it. No, no, it's just you. I absolutely only you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love Mulan. I, yeah, I saw I, it once I like, and I don't remember it. I like it. I think Mulan's really good. But it looks like they've changed this one the most, so that's why it's like, okay, cool. It, well, it, it looks like it has more of a series. It looks like a cool action it, movie, but Matt Damon's missing. It, it looks like they said, well, what if we made Mulan as an epic Chinese fantasy? Mm -hmm. You know, like, and so it does feel a little different. I love uh, her so much, that actress. She's she? she's a new character. I love her so much, huh? I do. I know. Yeah. I feel like there's some history there. I think that maybe that's her sister. Oh. Just saying. The trailer may may have hinted Spoiled at that it? or something. They're related in some way. I'll see it. It's Disney. The, uh, I got my money. The interesting thing about this. Cool. Uh, you know, this movie comes out in March, right, James? Yes, March 27th. There are a lot of movies that 
got their theatrical releases canceled in China because of the coronavirus. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. um, I guess because it's like, well, people aren't going to congregate in public places, mm-hmm. right? So mm-hmm. it's like a movie's not going to release there. So, I mean, I, Oh, I know what you're saying. What? This was a ploy by Disney, coronavirus. To the, bring the, the people back to the theaters. No, 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 no. no. They're trying to get them signed for Disney Plus. Oh, okay. So they get everyone sick. They're like, no, stay home and watch Mulan and Lady and the Tramp and all the other wonderful offerings like Brink, a boy, and his rollerblades. That's exactly it, Adam. You cracked the case. Wow, you're a regular Infowars. <laughs> <laughs> you are the hero of China. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, me and Dennis Rodman. Wait, that's North Korea. Well, I haven't, haven't heard anything yet about uh, Disney canceling any screenings of this because they want a billion. Oh, this might like, be the, me? the first uh, live-action Disney movie I go to a theater to see. Have we not seen any of them? Hmm. Oh, I saw Maleficent. Yes. Oh, yeah, I guess I did, did see Maleficent. For, uh, but it was it was for work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's the only one. Well, this is the only one f- since a while where it seems like they're doing a new take on it as opposed to just making it again. Mm-hmm. So when you make it again, only worse, I'm going to be less interested. Right. I think Mulan kind of came out in that post-Golden Age it was still really good, but it mm-hmm. came out in that post Golden Age Disney animation era. Um, can, can so, I, can I change the tone a little bit, real quick? Yeah. I want to just get a little serious. Okay. What to you had a bigger impact? The Beijing beef at Panda Express during the Olympics in 2016, or the Szechuan sauce that McDonald's had that we only found out about later because of Rick and Morty? I'm going to say neither. Okay. The answer is Beijing beef. Something about <laughs> something about getting like. <laughs> Anything other than a burger from a fast food place, any any beef other than a burger from mm-hmm. a fast food place is like, ooh, I don't know. Right, but that. like Panda, it's like, you like chicken or donuts? Why not both? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually a great segue because the next trailer we've got is Black Widow. <laughs> <laughs> Help me figure that one out. This is a relatively short one. This is a 30 second spot. Um, big year for Scarlet. Big year for Scarlet. Bigger year for Francis Poo. <laughs> Pew. It's just Pew. <laughs> no, she can't work in China. Poo. Too close to Winnie the Pew. Uh huh. <laughs> you're, you're full of zingers today. Who's the uh, other one? What do you mean? Who's Rachel the other Weiss. Black Widow? It's Rachel Weiss, Scarlett oh. Johansson, Francis Pahu. And um, Hellboy. All <laughs> women with similar bone structure. Yes. Disney, you've done it again. Well, well, they may all be from the same, remember that ballet school that t- took mm-hmm. away her ovaries and then turned her into yeah. a spy? Well, Josh Sweden's J.O. fantasy or whatever. They're yeah. all Russian, so they they do have uh, that kind of Slavic facial structure. <laughs> Russians, though. I mean, ru- it's, they're all Russian. It's like saying they're all American. It's a melting pot over there, literally. Melting, <laughs> ma- melting wax oh. covering covering the land. <laughs> uh, I like that we see a little bit more of Taskmaster doing the pretty badass Captain America thing, he which d- means he, he fought Captain America at some point. I, I'm, thought starter. I'm going to say this: too much of this movie visually seems tactical. There's no distinction. Like part of the best thing about for me about Avengers was the fact that it was like Captain America was blue, Iron Man was red, gotcha. uh, like this other character was you know black, this other character was yellow. Like it was all this stuff so when you see them together it felt like something. All of them are like a Rob Liefeld in the modern age covered in patches with parachute straps even though they don't have parachutes on and swords on their back kind of thing. Okay, we'll take you to see G.I. Joe. I just wish that we could go for something. I hope that when the movie actually comes out it's it does have a visual identity to it because right now it doesn't like Taskmaster is just a guy in a ski mask. For now, where's the skull? What if when he falls into a vat of yellow paint? We have been so spoiled by the um, the Guardians of the Galaxies, the Thor Ragnaroks, mm-hmm. the what what do they call it? The, um, the that Wanda tier Visions. that tier of actually I'm in WandaVision. We'll talk about that. No, I'm, I'm with you But there. we've been spoiled by that tier. What do they call that tier of Mar- the Marvel Universe? Cosmic. Co- the Cosmic Universe. Yeah. Um, the, the Trapper Keeper yeah. uh, palette. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That it's hard to sort of go back to just this, gritty realism. But it's supposed to be like a spy movie. No one has superpowers in this other than maybe Taskmaster. Actually, can you pull up a picture of Taskmaster uh, comic version just so at least has some reference? Yeah, please. Of how cool he could look. Yeah. You you have you seen him? Prepared to be blown away? No, I don't. He, he, I don't know. There it is. Imagine imagine the coolest dude, <laughs> <laughs> the skull face. He looks like Skeletor. He does. He's got a skull mask, mm-hmm. and then and then he's got a hood. Yeah, click that really colorful like one. Like this you know. is cool. That's okay. What if he looks like that by the end though? 
We're okay with I that, I don't right? care. I know. I'm tired of movies going, and at the end, he looks the way you want him to. Then you go Put Woody scroll. Harrelson in the wig <laughs> in frame one. He, he did not know what he was filming. You pound the table a lot, and it shakes my microphone. Well, that's. I'm sorry, but I just get it very impassioned. Like, mm. I think... That's like I don't know. I'll get you. This is a cool black, concept black design. <laughs> this is a cool Taskmaster look. Okay, like it pulls it in. Uh, this to me is not cool. That's okay. What, so for he's audio got, listeners, like a tiny little. He's got. Yeah. A, we're looking at a, a still from from that, one of the earlier trailers. That's an airsoft player, and then the one you're looking at looks more like a transformer. Yeah, it looks okay. like some dude who has access to some really killer gear. So had are they? Have they upgraded the the design since the early trailers went out? Yeah, this is what he looked like in what we just watched. Yeah. Oh, jeez. I didn't even notice him. But the thing, his he's, whole thing is... He's so unnoticeable. He Well, he, yeah, his whole thing is basically he fights or he scans someone just once and then he, like, can learn to fight the way they do. Yeah. Except for Deadpool or something. No. I don't know. Or except sorry, Moon I'm sorry, Knight. Moon Knight. It's like a Terminator. <laughs> and he can. The thing is, he can do it if he wanted to uh-huh. for Moon Knight. Right. He chooses not to okay. because he'd be too crazy. Ooh. He'd get himself killed okay. if he even thought of trying to do that as Moon Knight. But Moon Knight fights the way Moon Knight fights, and he's okay? Well, because Moon Knight's crazy. Okay. You'd be crazy to do that. I don't... I can't wait for that show. So I don't know. I'm 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 sure I'm sure that Black Widow is going to be good. I'm sure it's going to be entertaining and fun. Um, I hope it isn't like a low tier uh, Civil War or you know uh, Winter Soldier. Right. Like I hope we don't look. At, I hope we look at this and we go. This is this is an even better extension of that vibe, that Marvel spy action vibe that you got um, from those movies. Mm-hmm. Not one that seems subpar that they just felt bad that they were killing off Black Widow. Hey, and so they. I'm just happy she finally got a movie. It took 15 years. <laughs> yeah. So her literal and, character death. Yeah. And uh, and putting a younger woman <laughs> opposite her yeah. in it. Hey, we want but, you to meet your new friend, Pooh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, interesting. You're getting a lot of buzz, I've noticed. He's like, oh, yeah, well, I saw Marriage Story. She goes, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, they get along, I bet. Yeah. They seem like best friends. Yeah, we're paused it on in the trailer. He has his shield, but even it, it's like such a dull he, ver, cu- variation. Black no Manta blue. was better. <laughs> <laughs> Black Manta was Black Manta looked <laughs> stupid. Yeah, but at least stood out amongst the background. That's fair. Yeah, this he looks like a uh, Christ uh, Taskmaster looks like Crisis suit. Looks mm-hmm. like Basically. Captain Phasma. It is. It's weird wow. because like even if you do that whole like aesthetic color wheel thing. Mm-hmm. You know, like blue and orange are opposites. Right, right. Hot and cold kind mm-hmm. of thing. And it looks like they were like, we'll keep half of that. Right. right. But then you're not on the color wheel. Well, on the Da Vinci Resolve uh, deck, they're like, uh, desaturate more. Darker, yeah. please. We don't like yeah. color. Gritty. Yeah, dark. We'll see. We'll see how it plays out. Um, up next, I just want to talk not too long. Again, very short trailer uh, for SpongeBob. I'm not a SpongeBob guy. Missed it. Same. It's I, I was Ren and Stimpy, so I was part of the Ren and Stimpy generation. SpongeBob came out, and it was like, all right, well, instead of going full crazy for the kids, we're going to have our animators only go half crazy, half weird, half crazy. Okay. And so that's where SpongeBob landed. That being said, the animation in this is fantastic. It's a Klaus-esque. What a beautiful, beautiful look. Like, I might see this just because I want to look at it. It is spectacular it, looking. It, oh, sorry, go ahead. My man Snoop Dogg's in it, too. And Ken Reeves. Spoiler. But is this the thing that everyone's upset about because the creator died and he said, I never want SpongeBob to live on past me? I think so. Or something? So, wh- like, basically, Nickelodeon's like, we'll never do anything over your dead body. But you say yeah. that about Funhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I threaten you. Bury me mm-hmm. with the play button, yeah, you just, say. Just give me the little one, not the big one, <laughs> <laughs> because I want my servants to have room <laughs> among me <laughs> in the uh, the pyramid. Uh. Now, um, yeah, I didn't know. Is because I'm with you, James. We're like, I I was a little too old for SpongeBob, so it is sort of like a generational thing. I remember being like talking to a group of kids, being like, "Do you kids? What do you watch? Uh, what are you kids watching these days? You watch Invader Zim or something? No, too scary. Watch SpongeBob." I'm like, "Fucking children." Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I was not on the SpongeBob train either. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for the again, record, I was talking to a group of kids because I was a helper. I was a TA oh, okay. for a second and third grade class. Your answer has been questioned. <laughs> Good. The comments can rest. <laughs> Case closed, Your Honor. It was one guy, and he goes, "Is Adam still alive?" <laughs> I do think, like James, I might see this purely based on the beautiful animation. It looks really good. It's, like it's just 3D, though, right? 
Or is it? This is computer animated, but in a very, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of the Peanuts movie. Oh. I remember the You peanuts. might be the only one who saw it. The rest I of probably was. I, you know what? I saw it, but I think you liked it, right, James? I did like I it. I didn't like it. Oh. Um, but it is, it's like, case. it's very garbage. beautiful. Like, when you think about translating something into the the style, mm-hmm. like, as opposed to just going full, it's all from the same perspectives yeah. as the comic strip and the cartoons but it is 3D, mm-hmm. and so it's like it has a very unique s- style. It's to like it. a like a Link's Awakening sort of thing. Yeah, like a a fresh new perspective on uh, a garbage Sunday comic book. That <laughs> why do we still care about it in this year? Just go to Knott's Berry Farm if you love it so much. God, let it die. Slice of life. Okay, anyway. it's not supposed to tell big stories. Uh-huh. That's I, I what Peanuts know. is about. Bring back Marmaduke and Beetle mm-hmm. Bailey and the rest. <laughs> Give us the Ziggy movie. Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> there is a, I used to watch a Kathy there, there cartoon. There was a Kathy cartoon, there yeah. Was? Yeah. Yep. yeah. I used to watch it. God, I remember going through 99% of the com- Sunday comics and just going, no, <laughs> bad. You know who would be the first to go in the Quiet Place universe? <sighs> Kathy. Maybe she, she doesn't would. shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Arr, my heel broke. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like it was already broken. Um, there's a Quiet Place Two mm-hmm. uh, trailer. This movie comes out March 20th. Soon. So this one's coming out very very soon. Um, we've talked kind of talked about this before on the show, and I don't think any of us watched the first movie and we're like more. <laughs> yeah. We want we want more. It was, um, was a fun idea. I thought it was a really well-made, fun movie. The viewing experience was one of the worst of my whole life because the movie is almost entirely silent, so you can hear all of the bastards who are sitting around you. Well, not even. The, just talking. No, the, I, oh. the, I had to tell the people next to me to not talk, and they looked at me like I was stupid. And I, I was like, that. you were the yeah. only people talking in this theater about yeah. a, in a movie that's about not talking. It, it was opposite day at Camp Stupid for oh us because God. I'm I'm usually movies are just, a dude is doing a an Instagram story throughout every moment of the movie. And for whatever, for whatever reason, this one, as soon as the movie started, dead quiet. I was like, wow. Uh-huh. Like people were on the edge of their seat, they actually shut up. It was, you know, like a shitty AMC theater where the sound was bad, and people are like perked up and just like, I think even one time someone was like, shh, give it down. Hey, try mm-hmm. this movie. Wow. I was like, oh, awesome. Thank you. This and movie then, is unrealistic for me because there's no way that Emily Blunt could be keeping her hair color, that blonde, <laughs> and those highlights that she's like, how? How? She's not Emily Blunt. She's well, playing the character wife. <laughs> 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 I don't remember her I, name. I always do the thing where I was like, well, let's see. If there was an apocalyptic type situation and it all became days gone, mm-hmm. survival of the fittest kind of thing. What would I really have to worry about? I don't have diabetes. Mm-hmm. Like I don't need the. The only thing is I'd have to make sure I had a satchel full of contacts. Contact solution. Oh, yeah. Contact yeah. lenses. Like just things like that. That because uh, if I lost that, then I you know. Uh, I mean, you wear those like those visors the the football players wear, where you just have permanent glasses on your helmet or something like that. <laughs> yeah, well, you'd have yeah. to get that manufactured or something. You but either way, it. that would be my greatest weakness. It wouldn't be finding food or water. Mm-hmm. It would be making sure I could see the food or water. Wait, sure. so you wouldn't go to a like LASIK place and try to give yourself LASIK? Like, oh, what a cool scene! Re- he has to hold his finger on the, the laser. Powers yeah. out. Yeah. Like, oh. You would you would like read the like you know how electronics come with like the quick setup manual? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you would read the quick setup. So you only have time for the quick setup right. like, laser yeah. manual, and you would read that, and you'd have but to do it. But the quiet placers are on their way, mm-hmm. and they're like, Rrr. and lasers mm-hmm. emit a certain frequency, it's just a certain hum, and they're like, they're like tasting the laser, mm-hmm. yeah. They and then you get some of the alien eyes, yeah. and you can see the same way Charlie Day saw in Pacific Rim. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this movie that we're concocting. Anyway, uh, yeah. um, I was just gonna say maybe Emily Blunt's character. That's her thing. Why Adam, she do just you have that? Her shirt? priority is the John getting, Krasinski's wearing. I might. That's a that's a different sponsor. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, huh. this movie's coming soon. It looks like we're gonna get a look at um, the Quieters. Well, it looks like we got Jaiman Hansu in there, right? And it looks like we're gonna get a, a look at what happened before the fall. Mm-hmm. Because anytime a compelling post-apocalyptic movie happens, you go, "Well, show me what happened before yeah. Fear the Walking Dead." I, I will go, say, oh, like, sorry, oh no, please, no, you go, please. I, mine's a joke. I want to hear yours. Everything we both. The joke. The joke. The joke. I just my my question is I I want to see the movie about the guy 
who sees the apocalypse and he starts jumping up and down because he's like, finally, I start to get to eat people and it's okay. <laughs> I get to be weird. That one German cannibal that yeah. just fell into the luckiest well, day of his life. Or just the guy who's like, God, I just want to, I just want to like invite someone in and get crazy, you know? Tim Robbins, War of the Worlds. Exactly. Oh, There's, true. I want to see that guy's story. Like, what was his life so mundane? He hates it. Mm-hmm. And he sees quiet place monsters dropping out of the sky and he's like, yes, mm-hmm. I'm going to survive and be weird. Mm-hmm. Anyway. I, I was going to disagree with James that I do like when when a movie or a book tells you and shows you the the especially when it gets on a geop- geopolitical level where it's like this is what happens when everything fell apart. That's what I love about World War Z. Once it starts in the book, once it starts mm-hmm. telling you like here's how it all kind of mm-hmm. started to crumble. I do like that. Did a lot. the Quiet Place need that though? No. I don't think it did. It it should have done it in the first movie if it was going to. That's what I should have clarified. That's what I meant. Like once you already have a satisfying movie that ignores all that and focuses on a small thing, then they make the new one. They're like, well, let's show let's show you that time he ran away. Prove me wrong. Quiet place too. prove. Um, me Yeah. I mean, I'm not dismissing this movie. I don't think it was needed. (laughs) Um, I will say that being said, the closest thing I can think of is 28 weeks later. It's actually a good sequel. 28 days later is like, Pretty a pretty classic zombie horror movie, um, and then twenty eight weeks later, I would say the second half of that movie is is weird is a little too actiony, but that for opening scene is fantastic. I think most of the movie's pretty good. Like it shouldn't have worked as a sequel, but I was I remember walking on going didn't hate it. Yeah, yeah. pretty. And then and it's got a pretty badass ending. Yeah, you're like the helicopter okay. thing was a little much. <laughs> Yeah. But other than that, yeah, I, I like the what's his name Hawkeye's in it when he's when he's he's pushing the car. Oh yeah, that yeah. part's pretty bad. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of cool moments. There's a lot of badass moments in it. It is it does go like pretty off the handle when you think about how small and contained Twenty Eight Days Later is. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking um, about Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> well, we are now, Elise. Top Gun Maverick mm-hmm. had a little uh, spot there. Doesn't really show anything. It seems it, it this it would appear this movie is about nothing other than Tom Cruise going and flying fast like jets. Mm-hmm. Which this movie is like the equivalent of what we've been saying about Funhouse Hawaiian style. Okay, oh. it's like like hey pay pay to send us to Hawaii. We'll come back with something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we will. I mean, yeah. we'll come back with something. But all, I mean, let's face it. This is just so that way we can all go hang out in Hawaii. Right. Um, this appears to be that Tom Cruise, the actor with the death wish. <laughs> I, will, uh, like, I will say, Tom Cruise flying that jet, it looks like somebody farted into his mask. <laughs> and it's stuck in his helm. The whole, this, this, he's trying to get away yeah. from it the whole time. I, yeah. I think the internet's a buzz. Um, I've been going <laughs> to my, my favorite Top Gun website daily to get the info. Oh, wow. Yeah. Top of the gun? No, Kenny Bloggins. <laughs> wow. Okay. Nice job. You've Big setup on that for a for dumb joke for a pun. Nice job. What if no one had asked you what it was called? <laughs> yeah. like, they want to know what it's called? <laughs> you know what? Black Maverick, I took a bet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I said, no, don't bring the woman back. She's old now. <laughs> Give me someone half my age. Um, no sign of Iceman. He'll uh, show up. Shout out to Maverick for not changing his helmet I think in 30 years. I think Sal Kilmer said he's in it. Yeah, I think he is, I mean, but they're not showing him. I think Kenny Loggins also did say that, and they're like, we haven't contacted him yet. The song's already made. He made it 35 years ago. <laughs> yeah. It's Highway to the Danger Zone. We added, we, we cleaned it up in aud- audition or something, and we're done. Yeah, but yeah. it does seem like like Tom Cruise, He takes. he's like, one for me, one for you, except all of them are for, for him. him. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, I'm excited to see. I just, I'm, it's going to be weird, though, because... He is sort of this weird, you know, he's aging, but yeah. he's for pretty damn good for, what, a 55-year-old or whatever? I think he's almost 60. But it, it's going to be him, and then they're going to do, like, the reu- reuniting sort of thing, like Jester comes out and Goose and all the pals, but then Iceman comes out and his Goose is like, coming out in this yeah, movie? Yeah, they bring out the <laughs> casket, <laughs> and he goes, mm-hmm. he goes, <laughs> Iceman, you got a new throw. Do you think Meg Ryan's in it? Who? Yeah, no, I don't think she's wife coming of back. Goose. Yeah. Oh, she was wife of Goose. I thought you were doing a um, what was the other one? The Charlie Sheen knockoff, Hot Shots. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the almost better version of Tom yeah. Gunn. They definitely didn't uh. ask Kelly McGillis to come back. Yes, Ew. she said she was too old. Right. Mm. They uh, said we would have called you, but we assume you can't pay the bills. Yeah. So you know why bother? But yeah. I mean, I'm going to see stuff. this. I have a feeling that they'll they'll be like Jester's dead, man. 
died mm -hmm. in action. Mm -hmm. Like they'll yeah. like that'll mean something. Who cares? Like, what about Merlin dead too? <laughs> <laughs> Michael. What about <laughs> that Rising Sun or whatever that guy's name was? That was mildly offensive. Uh, also <laughs> Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Hollywood. Wolfman. Dead. Yeah, vo volleyball uh, guy. Jabberwocky See was that guys. one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's gonna be like uh, Crash and Nitro and uh, <laughs> Lace. <laughs> They're all gone. Hubba bubba. <laughs> well, we also have another very intense movie coming, No mm -hmm. Time to Die. To me, this is, because James Bond is like never the pure excuse for action. It's like a movie that's franchise that's an action movie that still feels like it has to come up with a plot to mm -hmm. get us to the action. And I appreciate that mm -hmm. about it. Um, again, very short trailer, more like a teaser, just showing us a few things. But we do know that who's in the back of the plane that Maverick's flying. <laughs> 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 Daniel Craig is uh, in there too. So. I can see Daniel Craig in a, a Top Gun situation. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what's it called? Double Seven. Shouldn't it be called The Last Time to Die? Instead no, he's got no, time, no to time, to time to die. I know, but this is the last time he's going to die. He's not going to die. What if he dies? They don't kill him off because uh -huh. it doesn't matter because they just pass the mantle to someone else. Mm -hmm. doesn't they matter. They pass it to Rami Malek. Yeah. <laughs> but at the very end, Rami Malek's sitting at a cafe in France, and he looks over and he nods. And mm -hmm. we go, that's that's all I need. And they go, yeah. real quick, reverse shot. And there's no one there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was nodding at an empty chair. And it's not France. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's in an old folks' home. It's home. Paris, Texas. Oh, um, so. But yeah, so I can't wait for this. I didn't want to see this because I'm, I'm already sold. Oh, I didn't, didn't want to see the trailer. See the trailer. Yeah, mm -hmm. just because I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm into it. I almost didn't either, but then I was like, oh, 30 seconds. Yeah. It, you're right, though. Fool me with 30 It seconds. is mostly reused stuff, but I don't know. Oh, it, I wasn't, wasn't crazy. It's crazy, it's crazy how they've transitioned this. Like I, like I said, what I liked about the Craig era is that it's transitioned. Most of them go from being like, oh, like an action movie to being a parody of itself by the end of it. The mm -hmm. Daniel Craig franchise may be the only run of this that hasn't become a parody of itself hmm. like it'll it, and it also it moves a plot forward so you know you think about ray fines is now new m mm -hmm. judy dench is where we started you and have um, you have ben wishaw is the new q like mm -hmm. you have a lot of like transition they've added a whole bunch of new agents money penny is started as just some rando and now is like a field agent who and works with them and stuff blonde relic Mm -hmm. That's outstayed his well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lingering yeah. love interest, too, is one thing. <laughs> yeah. I, I love Leia Sidhu. Uh -huh. I like her, too. I, it's just sort of, once again, the whole plot was weird, where she's like, you killed my father. He's like, I'm going to bang you. Yeah. And she goes, cool. Well, it would he appear always wins. that she has more secrets, too. Because oh. it looks like it looks like in the other trailer that they're, like, broken up. Oh. Oh, yes, I remember that. So He, he goes, I don't I don't know what to do after I, I, I stick it in you. <laughs> like, do we talk or, like... Yeah. Do you want to see a movie? I don't know. So then they also had a spot. This isn't necessarily movies, but Marvel Studios released its Disney Plus mm -hmm. super spot, which shows uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, WandaVision. Um, and the rest. Is this the first time anyone's been excited about more from Wanda and Vision? Yes, yes. but I was excited before when they said that the, the Vision family comics would sort of be a source because I like those comics. Mm -hmm. And it has a stylistic choice. Mm-hmm which I appreciate. Yeah, that stylistic choice being, please don't cancel. <laughs> we know you've seen The Mandalorian, we have more. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I know, they, they did a good job. They We said this for years or whatever, but like, it all kind of started with Guardians of the Galaxy, where it's like, okay. Well, I mean, Disney didn't do, uh, it's all Kevin Feige and the Marvel, the Marvel team, but like, mm -hmm. when they made Iron Man, like worth his own, like basically a household name, and then mm -hmm. they did the Guardians of the Galaxy, it's like, all right, they can, they're going to make it work with anyone. They're mm. they're actually making people excited to see Falcon and Winter Soldier in a, a show together. Yeah. The the thing that stood out for me most, the whole trailer, um, other than uh, Vi Wanda and her cheesy X-Men Scarlet Witch crown, yeah, yeah. Um, was this shot where it looks like Captain America is at some sort of Avengers Amer Captain America celebration, mm -hmm. except it's clearly not. Uh, yeah. It's clearly like Bucky. You know, I know who it is. You know who that is? Yeah, I saw the, I saw the leaked photos of who the actor is. Whoa! I will say his father's name rhymes with uh, Kurt Crussell. Okay, don't know who you're talking about. Excellent. Um, so, but yeah, so it's like you know, obviously there's going to be some politicking over 
who's going to assume the mantle right. of Steve Rogers, Captain America, I mean, and to, such. Captain America was property of the U.S. government because he was pumped full of all those steroids that yeah. they own, and like, and he signed up for the military and basically signed his life over. So yeah, I'll take it. And then yeah, I'm more excited for Wandavision though. I don't know if I'm excited. I'm excited for it looking like it's crazy, mm-hmm. but I also want it to be entertaining. Yes. Like like if for me if it gets into some sort of a uh, sort of like the the dark aspect of the Vision family comics mm-hmm. um then I will I think be more into it. If it's just them sh- doing shtick the whole time. Well, <laughs> no, I, I think care. I think it's obviously it, to me I'm hoping it's not going to get as crazy but it's going to be like a um, don't hug me, I'm scared. Sort yeah. of thing where it, it's going to be a psych- psychedelic, trippy brain, f- like fuck. Right. I think. Well, it like, I it hope. like it gets you in with this sort of like, look how wholesome and great it is, but it's all breaking down because it's in her crazy yes. brain mm-hmm. trying to deal with this thing that she could never well, get and that's back. That's like the Vision family comics where they're like, yeah. we're, we, you know, we gave Vision his like perfect nuclear family, but then like mm-hmm. everything starts cracking. Right. And, and it's great. And that's what they've done a really good job of is not adapting things one for one. They've, pulled the best parts of it and then it's also leading into uh dr strange and the you know multiverse of madness which wanda is going to be a part of Mm -hmm. so it's like okay cool this is this is actually a really interesting cool lead up to a another thing that's also going to be trippy and weird so i I I hope disney plus also is experimenting with the kinds of content that they can get away with Mm -hmm. like just that imagineering documentary and then also sporky shorts Mm -hmm. like they're like Content's content. Maybe we can just get something up here. So, like, the character's name yeah. is Forky. Forky, yeah, Forky, right? Um, he said Sporky. That's his brother <laughs> or sister. I don't know. Isn't her a girlfriend? Maybe. Um, but yeah, so it's like you know, I hope that it is a coherent thing, and they're not just like we're just basically doing like thirty-minute vignettes of what if v- Wanda stuff. Well, you know, they, they are doing the what if series, but it seems like with all this, also with Loki, that it's. They're trying to find. They're trying to do what they said they were going to do with Agents of Shield and this other stuff. Like it's mm-hmm. all connected, except they're like, no, no one's talking to us on mm-hmm. the TV side. So now mm-hmm. they're like, okay, well, screw it. We control the platform, we control the content, we control the IP. Now they can actually write it on a whiteboard and say we can actually execute on this stuff, and that the show will actually influence the movies and vice versa. So mm-hmm. that's that's sort of. I mean, it's all becoming yeah, digital anyway, so it doesn't really matter. They're not making like a twenty-four episode TV season either. No, it's just like you this know? little little bit, little like mini series. Yes, basically. which which now it just seems so laborious mm-hmm. to do and to is watch. It, is it laborious or laborious? Both are acceptable. They do? Okay. Good. Oh, I actually I, don't even know. I just want to sound cool at dinner parties. <laughs> well, um, this wasn't on my list, but it's under recommended videos, so I'm gonna go ahead and play Minions, the Rise of Gru trailer. Oh man, I'm late for that a came out yesterday. <laughs> Um, we'll give it one watch and then move on with our lives. Three minutes, I'm gonna keep hitting the fast forward. So it looks like I got some minions. Yeah. Gru's got hair. So, so what did you guys do this weekend? He's a kid. Now, yeah. don't forget, in the Minions movie, Gru appeared at the Villains Festival in the background, and then he's yelling at them. There's smashing stuff, and that's that. Is so, that a yeah. Sonic Super Bowl TV spot? Adam, you mentioned it earlier, but Sam Raimi is in talks for Doctor <laughs> Strange 2, which we're gonna touch on briefly after this word from Manscaped. Support for this episode of Filmhouse is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the belt grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. All right, guys, listen up. Valentine's Day is just around the corner and you don't wanna be that guy with the bush or that nerd who cut his balls prior to getting it on. Whether you have a Valentine or not, you need to be prepared to look good down there. If the fear of doing irreparable harm is holding you back from trimming down those hedges, Manscaped's brand new third generation trimmer, the Lawn Mower 3.0, features a cutting edge ceramic blade to prevent manscaping accidents. Millions of balls are about to be nick free thanks to Manscaped's advanced skin safe technology. I can picture all of those healthy balls now. Can you picture those healthy balls? Just look at them. 90 minute battery life means no more running out of juice when you've still got a mohawk on your crotch. Actually, that sounds kind of cool so you can still do the mohawk thing but it'll be your choice plus the LED grooming light will make precision shaves easy so get 20% off and free shipping with the code filmhouse20 at manscaped.com that's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code filmhouse20 stay sexy this valentine's day and manscape and we're back Thank you, Manscaped, for your sponsorship. Uh, I just want to talk about one last little story here. Um, 
Sam Raimi may be returning to Marvel to direct Doctor Strange in the multiverse. Scott Derrickson was the director of the first movie. He was supposed to come back for the second movie, but decided to not do that. Mm. Didn't want it. Didn't want it. He said he wanted no part of it except for being an EP. Um, yeah. He'll take the money. Yeah. What did, we'll what did uh, Derrickson do before? He was like a horror film director, right? I think so. Yeah. Uh, the, the story I'd heard he wanted to do more of a horror thing with the next uh, Doctor Strange. Yes, I remember that well, too. And then I guess they wouldn't let him do what they wanted to, which is weird because then – they, well, they, if, if Sam, they're talking Sam to Sam a, Raimi, he's also a horror director. Yeah, but he does, Yeah, I mean, very similar, kind of mm-hmm. cut from the same cloth, like horror director, superhero movies. Some, sometimes people want to find drama in this, and other times it's just, listen, I had a vacation schedule. To <laughs> like, or like sometimes it, it is really simple explanations, but how do you guys Benedict feel about Sam Raimi? We don't have to that. dwell on it, but I just thought it was an interesting piece of news. I'm very interested. Yeah. The, the, the Raimi meme... Uh, Community is ablaze. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they can't wait. Because yes. uh, do you remember in Spider-Man 2, they mentioned Doctor Strange? Wow. Wow, guys. Uh-huh. Look at it go. Okay. It's all it's all coming back. Coming together. Uh-huh. Yep. Finally, he's getting to tie off that. <laughs> tie off that. Well, here's the thing. It's the multiverse of madness. Yep. Sam Raimi directing. Mm-hmm. Are we going to see Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man, <laughs> in... That. I just I like the day when he shows up on set and he rattles the cage and he goes, "Get out, Toby! Get out there! <laughs> you, we have the potential." Half naked and hungry. <laughs> and and goes, all <laughs> the theories are pointing that that Doctor Strange is going to be the turning point for the next MCU thing because it's going to just say, "And now all is fair game. X Men, everything, blah 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 blah. Everything that you've seen before that we own now is all canon, mm. but it's also not canon, and we can do whatever we want to." Right. Alfred Molina returns He's back. as Doc Ock. The oh. woman who played his wife returns as her. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Frida. But no. <laughs> here we are. Yeah, no, that's – it would be curious. More than anything, curious. I want a Spider-Man multiverse movie now after uh, Into the Spider-Verse. But, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. I thought it was kind of cool, a kind of interesting thing. Out of all the movies that are coming up in this list – this is one of the few that I was like, ooh, there's basically Thor, Love and Thunder, and then this. Mm-hmm. I didn't really like the first Doctor Strange all that much. I thought it was a cookie cutter Marvel movie. Mm-hmm. And I thought his personality was a little too much like Tony Stark. Um, he's like, I'm a cool surgeon. Mm-hmm. I drive around mountains fast for no reason. <laughs> ah, my hands. <laughs> like Cool visuals, though. And I was like, I, was like, I wish it's we had a different take on it. But Doctor Strange as a character really grew on me in the other films. And I really enjoyed him. And so when they said, oh, we're going to go, his sequel is going to just unlock all this potential. And then it doesn't have to be a standard Marvel story. It can be the Ragnarok of Doctor Strange films. Then I said, cool. At least how do you feel about this? Wasn't he like the best hand surgeon in the world? Or like, couldn't he just like just start doing normal surgeries on people again? No. Wasn't he like the best? He, w- he <laughs> was the best surgeon, then he shattered his hands. Yeah, but now his hands are fine now because of magic. So can't he just help people on a one-to-one level and now? This is more important. I think now his hands create circles with runes upon mm-hmm. them. And then he can call uh, Wong. You see, because mm. a bunch <laughs> of people from all over the planet trained at this monastery I know the but I none of it. them could learn how to do it well until the white guy showed up <laughs> and he did it in like a week oh, and, Tilda. and when he showed up they said no and he said yes and they said fine and Mordo's like that's the Wi-Fi password Sam Raimi did Mordo say is that a or consummate Wong? professional mm-hmm. he's a skilled director mm-hmm. he's got Toby on speed dial mm-hmm. it's gonna be great would you say he's one of the best of the best yeah he's a great director well if we really want to find out one of the best of the best, you know what it's time for. Minions. It's time for the Fun House annual, triannual, we do it three times, <laughs> uh, award show Oscar, uh, film house award showdown Oscar spectacular award show. This is an award show for an award show where we are going to talk through some of the categories for the Oscars because the Oscars are this weekend. Or if you're watching this any other day than right away, they already happened. Mm. Um, but we are going to make our predictions for some of the bigger categories, who we think is going to win. It's okay if you haven't seen the film. Just make a guess. That's what the Academy does. Um, educated guess is what we're going to be encouraging. So, um, so yeah. Let's, uh, you guys, I gave you guys yeah. your sheets there. Let's kick things off. 
This is very exciting. Let's start out with the least important aspect of films mm -hmm. in the year 2019, the writing. Where's that? Bottom? Bottom oh. right there. Okay. So we're, we're just going to go ahead and combine both of these real quick. Sure. Adapted screenplay and original screenplay. Okay. So just to, just to for you guys to listen, the, we're going to sound off the nominees. We can get a little bit of a discussion and then ultimately decide. And then, surprise, surprise, I have the winners. Oh. I got, I know a guy. Whoa. Gave me the... <laughs> <laughs> How'd you get a yawn in there? <laughs> it's just she didn't have to say whoa is the thing. She could have just quietly yawned. <laughs> I have the winners right here in this envelope okay. so we can see if our predictions are correct and then you at home can impress all your friends by... What? Saying they Well, because they do, us? like, you know, they do stuff. Uh -huh. You know how they, like, do the stuff. Right. That this, you can do. This anyway. Is, this is on a, a hollow chip that a... a, a, a Sentient ape found mm -hmm. after the world has been bombed out. Yes. <laughs> That's a great premise for a movie, but not as uh, good as these original screenplays. Knives Out, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. Mm. Um, also adapted screenplays we'll go ahead and do at the same time. The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, The Two Popes. Joker, I was like, I mean, I guess the character, and then I went, oh, right, it's based on... Uh, the king of comedy. <laughs> um, Take that, Hollywood. Boom, kaboomed ya. Yeah, billion uh, dollars later. So what do you guys think? Where are you guys dropping on these two categories? Because um, I think I know where I'm leaning. Mm -hmm. Adapted screenplay for me is going to be Little Women. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. Original screenplay for me is going to be Parasite. I'm going with the two popes. <laughs> <laughs> for which one? And marriage story <laughs> of... Okay. Um, is two popes also the new pope? No, that's different. We to we because there I was, change my answer. Well, there was young pope. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then there's new pope. Then there's two popes. <sighs> young pope, new pope, same. Okay. Two popes, new popes, different. Is this in the same pope cinematic universe? Yeah, they do. They're in the popu. <laughs> <laughs> pope Q. I'll um, change my answer to. What did you say? I said Little Women for Jojo adapted. Rabbit, because that's. Is that adapted from Nazis? Yeah, it's adapted from it's ad okay. adapted from a book. Or is Joker? Um, Joker is adapted from a comic. I've only seen Joker and Jojo Rabbit. And on Robert this list. Movie. What about you, James? Uh, I'm gonna go Jojo <laughs> Rabbit and uh, original screenplay. I'm gonna say Knives Out just because it it didn't really get a ton of recognition anywhere. So that'll be my wishful one. I would also accept Parasite though, okay. or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Two Pups wins. So, all right. <laughs> this is this is the this is the document. Jude Law. This is it? the one that they have both uh, adapted and original in here. So sealed. You can see it's sealed. Okay. Was was it? Is it swack? <laughs> this is uh, James is now opening the envelope, uh, ladies and gentlemen. And the winner is. Please sit down. Oh my gosh, adapted cats. Right in vote. Cats oh. wins. I know this is now. And original goes to Transformers The Last Night. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> Two years ago. <laughs> wow. <laughs> shocking. <laughs> wow. Oh my gosh. Next tell you, category. Okay, next category. Do we have a shot of Mark Wahlberg in the audience we can cut to? <laughs> <laughs> I hit that guy. He's blind now. All right. Original song. All right. All right, guys. First, for nominees are I Can't Let You Throw Yourself Away. I can't let you throw yourself away. Are you doing Randy Newman or yawning again? Yeah. It's kind of one and Story Story 4. Hmm. I'm gonna love me Nick. again for Rocket Man, Elton John. I'm standing with you. Uh, breakthrough. Uh, Into the Unknown, Frozen 2, as performed by Adele Dazeem. Adele <laughs> Dazeem. <laughs> and then Stand Up from the film Harriet, ah. which I heard three seconds of on the radio. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to go Stand Up Harriet. I think Harriet's going to – it's it's only got two nominations somewhere in this whole in this whole thing. So oh. that's, that's how you should vote. Uh -huh. I'm going – I'm going to love me again, Rocket Man. Okay. Uh, I'm going with the uh, Can't Let You Throw Yourself Away from Toy Story. That Randy was Newman. That was cute. Okay. All right. Randy, are you Keep yawning? Keep yourself, don't throw. 
All right, here we go. Oh, you already started it? opening it. What? No, no, this is a new one. Oh, Just okay. Gonna, you can see it's sealed. I see. Okay. It's whacked. What's the song? Okay. Break the wax. Nope. Oh, there it is. Popped open. All right. And the award goes to Skimble Shanks, the Railway Cat. Write in vote. How's that song go? Skimble. I am Skimbles. Wait. No, I, I you kept playing that one over and over, so I actually know it. Is a cat. The rum tum tugger is a curious cat. That one didn't win. Oh, it didn't win. Okay. And actually, maybe it's because it split the vote. All right, let's move on to best actor in a supporting role. Oh man, not editing. Not editing. No. Okay, yeah, it's no one needs it. Yeah, yeah, no, we'll gonna... go there, but I feel like editing's more important. The, the, we started with the least important part of a movie, and yeah. now we're moving up to the most important part of a movie. <laughs> so we went from writing to the song. This whole paper is like a like a fantasy football league draft paper. It just circles in random places. <laughs> no, it, there's intention. Um, actor in a supporting role: Tom Hanks, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood; Anthony Hopkins from Two Popes; Al Pacino, The Irishman; Joe Pesci competing against Al Pacino, The Irishman; Brad Pitt, Once Upon a Time. <laughs> In Hollywood, <laughs> I want to go, Joe Pecci. <laughs> Joe Pecci. <laughs> okay, great this, choice. This is a tough one because people get get good acting mixed up with charisma. Mm-hmm. And they say, "Who did I like more?" Oh. Mm-hmm. I I hated Anthony Hopkins in the Two Popes. Really? But wow. That's because he did such a good job. <laughs> okay. Because like sometimes when Meryl Streep acts, you're like, Ugh. "Yeah, ooh, I hate you." Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was yeah. just surprised Joe Pesci's nominated, to be honest. Really? He's back. I thought he was good in this. I, I think they're just like, please never leave us again. I actually thought they got this right, because I thought Robert De Niro of the three of them was the least compelling. I would have nominated Christopher Plummer from Knives Out. Of course. Case. Yeah, but okay. he's not, so. I don't so think you, you so at least, <laughs> at least you went Joe Pepsi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Adam, you're going. Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. <laughs> just to mix it up, I'm going to say Brad Pitt. Okay. Because I love seeing him be cool. Pretty stoic. Yeah. I love seeing him be cool. Let's check what the envelope says. I got I another one right it. here. Who could it be? Here it is, sealed. Mm-hmm. Signed, sealed, delivered. Man. Rip that open. How did we get these great seats at the Oscars? <laughs> All right. Oh, my gosh. Another write-in vote. Idris Elba for McCavity. <laughs> Cats. Okay, you have to say the name of the movie because some people might be confused. No, they no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he's going to, what's that? It says there he's going to accept the award in his cat's <laughs> form. Uh, best actress in a supporting role, Kathy Bates for Richard Jewell, Laura Dern for Marriage Story, Scarlett Johansson for Jojo Rabbit, Florence Pahu for Little Women, or Margot Robbie in Bombshell. Okay. What are your thoughts here, guys? Mm. Do you want to go for, I mean, the women should go first. She gets a lot of guff from her association to Woody Allen and appropriating mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and appropriating different cultural roles. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to go Laura Dern. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Haldo yeah. herself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going with Florence Pooh from Little Women uh, okay. just so that Scarlett Johansson doesn't get too comfortable and starts watching her back. Okay. All right. Um, I'm going to go uh, Scarlett Johansson for Jojo Rabbit. I thought she was really good in that. That was my actual vote, but I just wanted to make the turn. Well, I'm being serious. Okay. So let's see who won. Oh my gosh, Kathy Bates won. Oh. But for misery. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that's weird that that happened. And it had a second Mm. place, it said Scarlett Johansson, but for Ghost in the Shell. Oh. So. (laughs) She convinced me that she was a Asian woman who died and chose to become Mm -hmm. a white woman. This is like when, uh, you know, Marty Scorsese Mm-hmm. One for Departed. It was actually for a Taxi Driver. That makes so sense. that's crazy. Well, you know, that's the Academy. That's how they work. Uh, let's Lord keep going. Uh, let's jump to costume design. Yeah. The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Mm-hmm. I'll just start this off. Okay. I'm going to go Jojo Rabbit because the costume is such an important costuming is such an important part of that the film. Shoes. The execution of that film. Um, because if they if they weren't dressed as Nazis, how would I know which ones were the bad ones? Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Once Upon a Time in uh, Hollywood. You, oh, okay. I was gonna say I was. You have to do the ellipsis. The television show. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I thought I liked the way Brad Pitt uh, got to wear his own clothes. Nice. Mm-hmm. That was cool. <laughs> yeah, he brought his own stuff. And then they said, "Take it off," and mm-hmm. they're like, "Don't you see how scar he is?" And I'm like, "No, I just see a hot fifty-year-old." Yeah. Ooh. Little women, I really believe they were full size. <laughs> <laughs> they, they had to scale down 
all the sets or uh-huh. scale up all the sets the to make the costumes right. yeah. larger than life. Mm-hmm. All right, make, uh, make the women <laughs> littler. <laughs> Let's see what it goes to. Who might it be? It goes to uh, cats <laughs> <laughs> for their because the fur. <laughs> what about the cockroaches? They also got the award. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Accepting accepting this award on so the cats' behalf are the cockroach women. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on to um, cinematography. Another very technical award. The yeah. nominees are The Irishman, Joker, The Lighthouse, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna go with the lighthouse mm, because mm-hmm. that's cool how they shot it in four by three in black and white in mm-hmm. today's uh, climate. <laughs> Are you worried that that it makes the perception that the movie was easier because they only no. dealt with two no. colors? That makes it harder. Oh no! Uh, no okay. well, there's black and white, and then but there's lighter black and lighter. No, mm-hmm. that's hard. You ever go on Instagram? You take a picture and then you're swiping through the filters and then you see one that's black and white. And you're like, this looks better because mm-hmm. it's easier. Yeah. So. These make my balls look better. Uh-huh. So, all right. So, uh, you're voting for The Lighthouse. I am, yes. All right. Okay. Elise? I'm going to go The Irishman because I was impressed by the way the DP made uh, Robert, Robert uh, Pattinson. De Niro look full size. <laughs> nice. Great, great <laughs> answer. I was, like, I was like, was it Robert De Niro? Yes, it was. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go 1917 mm-hmm. because how did, they, how did they get that camera on the truck? Mm-hmm. Also... When, that far back in time when only Peter Jackson was filming it. It should have been black and white, but they made it color, Mm -hmm. and I respected that. Right. And then why did that kid from Game of Thrones look fat? He had a lot of things on. Mm -hmm. He was wearing a lot of clothes. That film will not grow old. And the winner... times I watch it. The winner is... Um... um, uh, (laughs) Isn't it right there on the page? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Why are you looking off... What are you looking off there to the right? The winner is... <laughs> Why, what are you looking at? Um, Who is it? How to Train Your Dragon. Which one? The second one. Cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's that one? Wow, there? that's a shocker. <laughs> okay. Let's go to animated feature film. How to Train Your Dragon. <laughs> the third one. Um, I Lost My Body. Klaus. Mm. Missing Link. Toy Story 4. I'm going to go... I Lost My Body. I haven't seen it yet. But mm-hmm. I think it's got potential. It's got potential. I'm gonna, go, right. I'm gonna missing link. Everyone said it was good. I and the, it's a shame that no one. Shame on all of you for not seeing it. Mm-hmm. Mm. I'm gonna have to go. How to Train Your Dragon: The Hidden World, only because it has a, an Oscar-winning reputation for having won for cinematography okay. in this previous iteration of the franchise. Okay. Who, who's the I mean, guy in that movie? His name doesn't sound real. Jay Baruchel. That's the one. <laughs> I thought it was Jay Barchichel. Yeah, see? Is it not, are you sure it's not pronounced Francis Pahu and Jay Barchichel? <laughs> all right. Okay. I hope um, all right. The winner is... Open it every time. He doesn't even show that. It's that sealed. Minions trailer that we saw earlier, <laughs> but Rise of Gru. Okay, all right. I was going to jokingly call it the Rise of Gru, well, but it is called the Rise of Gru, isn't it? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Let's go, let's go update our universal Let's do classes. film editing. We're almost there, guys. Okay. We're almost to the end. Film editing, Ford versus Ferrari. Uh, <laughs> that's what they call it in Italy. Uh, the Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Parasite. Mm. This is my favorite category because no one knows what editing is. Right. I liked the editing in Parasite. I thought it was well done because it crafts a very interesting story mm-hmm. with its editing dynamics. Okay, great. Nice. Elise? Ford versus Ferrari, all the wheel close-ups. Me too. I was going to say the same thing. There's never two wheel close-ups in a row. It always goes wheel close-up, driver, wheel close-up. Mm-hmm. That's that's a sign of good editing, so I'm also going to go Ford versus Ferrari on that one. Two done it. Ford versus Ferrari. Oh. One. That's cool. For best editing. And it says for no, for no two wheel close-ups in a row. Oh. How'd they do it? They, I mean, they edited it best. Okay. So, so that one was right. Is that we the were end? Right. So that... Elise and I have one point. <laughs> <laughs> is that what we're doing? <laughs> all right. Show Mark Wahlberg. Let's again. just do all the best actor, best actress at the same time. Okay. All right. Uh, best actor: Antonio Banderas in Pain and Gain. <laughs> <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Adam Driver for Star Wars. Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> Joaquin Phoenix for that movie where. Um, 
uh, Casey Affleck assaulted women. Okay. Um, Jonathan really Price right. for the two popes. Oh. And then when uh, best actress we have Cynthia Irv. Urivo for Harriet, Scarlett Johansson for Ghost in the Shell, Saoirse Ronan for Little Women and for The Grey, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, Charlize Theron for the one with Seth Rogen, and uh, <laughs> Renee Zellweger for Cold Mountain. Mm -hmm. What's your, who would your vote? So we have to give this to them at the same time? Well, you just give me both your answers. We don't have to do two discussions. I it's just actors pretending. I loved Adam Driver and Renee Zellweger and their performances. Okay, Adam Driver, Renee Zellweger. I didn't say which movies, but I loved it. Great, okay. Hollywood darlings, Cynthia Erivo and Jonathan Price. Okay, great. <laughs> They're on everyone's <laughs> lips. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to say uh, Saoirse Ronan, mm -hmm. but again, for the for the one where she's in the snow, right? What was that one called? I don't know. I don't she know. She was who like she a is. killer in the snow. Hannah. Hannah, yeah, for Hannah, the TV show, the Amazon show. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna go uh, Adam Driver for Star <laughs> Wars. Yes, because he was my favorite part. Right in. All right, let's see who wins it. So good. Best actor, honestly, probably Joaquin Phoenix because he pulled his face apart. And sad on the best inside. actress. Scarlett Johansson. Wow. But again, for Ghost in the Shell. Okay, a little late, but <laughs> there it is. So, and it also says, it's okay, she can play whatever she wants. Okay. Which is a weird thing for the Academy Wait, to state. When, when she's accepting the award, can it be the part where she's ripping her body apart, pulling the spider tank's head out? Or it's like she pulls the brain out? Yeah, that's the clip that they'll yeah. show. Okay, but it's from the anime. Yeah, yeah, Okay, but they'll show that. Um, all right, we're gonna, so here's the thing, best directing and best picture are two different categories. Uh -huh. That do barely makes any sense right. in most of these cases. Um, and a lot thing. of times the director on these films is also the producer, mm -hmm. which makes it even make even less sense. But what if like the director was mean? So the nominees are Ford versus Ferrari, The Irishman, Jojo Rabbit, Joker, Little Women, Marriage Story, 1917, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and Parasite. Gotta give it to the Irishman. He got the, the team back together. It's the longest <laughs> of the movies. So theoretically, he's he got the most movie. Did the most. Yep. And the most best. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then best picture. Um, same one, Irishman. Irishman, okay. All that, right. That's how you have to do it. He did the most directing. Yep. We know that. Put in the most hours. Elise. Directing. Giving it to I, uh, Irishman. Okay. Superhero. And then best he got he got those guys up before eight. Yeah. Same when you even set at seven. I was just impressed he knew to start filming when Robert De Niro was in his late twenties. Mm -hmm. He knew he was gonna make mm -hmm. the movie and he worked on it. Yeah. Because he obviously because he looked young. Yeah, he said, Suck it, boy's life. All right. So um, Best Picture. <laughs> boyhood. Uh, <laughs> best picture, at least. Giving it to Parasite. Parasite for best picture. Okay. Uh, I'm also I'm going to go us. best directing. Once upon a time in Hollywood. Best picture. Parasite. Let's see the winner. Mm. Green Book. Green Book won it two years in a row. <laughs> it was too good. It's rigged. And Downton Abbey the movie <laughs> also won. <laughs> Downton Abbey the movie also won. So yeah, that's okay. wow. Pretty exciting. Thanks, thanks to Fred for these. Yeah. Months ago, I said, boo the Academy, because they would never nominate a movie like Parasite for best pe fe feature. Mm -hmm. And it is. They proved you wrong. They proved me wrong. They saw our episode and said. It's a spite nomination. Yeah. So, you know, don't let it go to your head. Bong, bong, chu, bong chu, Jun Ho. Bong what? Bong Joon Ho. Bong Joon Ho. It, give him the Snowpiercer Let's Award. wrap it up. <laughs> anyway, that's our show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, make your bets. Remember, rewind it, watch it again and again, so that way you can make sure you get all the nominees, impress your friends this year at the Oscars. And uh, thank you to Manscaped for your sponsorship for this episode. Guys, any closing thoughts on how to pronounce Francis Pihu's last name? It's Pew. Adam? I think we're just we're at a crossroads. <laughs> <laughs> it's Pew, like the church Pew. We'll never know. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Is that Rachel Weiss? <laughs> no, it's Francis Pahoo. <laughs> when you think of Ferris Bueller, you think of Matthew Broderick.
Yes. And then when you call attention to him and go, he's not in the show. You got to deal with me. You go, yeah. I'm out. You got Charlie Slatter. <laughs> Have Ooh. you seen this show? Have you seen? Has no, I didn't seen know it this? existed I, until four I mean, minutes ago. I would, okay. I would bet that the reason something like this failed is because the movie Ferris Bueller, while good, is 